Hello there. Uh, my name is Gavin Fisher and I'm an Applications Engineer from FormFactor. I'm with the Centre of Expertise. Uh, I'm stood here now uh, in Milan in a uh, European Microwave 2022 uh, and in front of you, you, have, you can see uh, a system that we have which is currently uh, operating in our laboratory uh, in Dresden. Or it's actually SACA near Dresden. Um, it's an awful lot easier to uh, take a screen than it is to take an entire prober. Although we do have an entire prober just over here, uh, which is doing single sweep work uh, up to 170 gigahertz. But for today, um, I want to show you the fact that we have a prober that we're operating remotely from a trade show and it's working very nicely indeed. So the system that you can see here uh, over in this corner, this is a Summit 12000 probe station. It's a 200 millimeter prober that we have produced for a number of years. And this has been augmented uh, using our uh, autonomous RF measurement assistant. The uh, solution comprises uh, our microscope, which most of our customers would have on these kind of machines, uh, and a pair of uh, motorized RF positioners. On these motorized positioners, we have mounted some arms uh, using the Keysight N5291A system. Uh, this can go up to 130 gigahertz, though we've currently got it set up to 110. Uh, and we're using uh, a pair of Infinity probes, uh, Infinity 110s, although you can't see them as they're nestling inside uh, this chamber. The reason why we have that chamber on there is so that we can do over temperature measurements in a dark, dry and shielded environment to do the most demanding uh, on wafer characterization work. So you might say, well, what's so special about all of that? That's, that's kind of standard stuff and it's been around for a while and that would, would possibly be true. But one of the really nice things is, is that I have been, uh, particularly during period of lockdown, operating this machine, this very machine in fact, uh, remotely from my house in the United Kingdom. It uh, kept me sane during lockdown and enabled me to continue working. And this is the same machine that you can see operating today. And what we're doing uh, is we're allowing this machine to work uh, continuously on its own um, it's autonomous. It's uh, got a Python script to operate it uh, and what we're doing is we're making um, a series of measurements uh, of a wafer of our own. It looks very much like MP and standard substrate but it isn't. It's a series of uh, test structures and the machine is operating continually on its own. Um, when it's doing this work it's able to calibrate uh, entirely on its own uh, and if the calibration is successful um, it will then continue, move to the wafer, uh, and then move to the various sites it needs to uh, measure, including uh, adjusting the geometry from one site to another. So we literally do not have to touch the machine at all. Um, and what's more, it's able to do this work um, over temperature. So we can take it transition from one temperature to another, and the machine is able to adjust the probe geometry to maintain a constant spacing between the probes without any risk of damage. So it is uh, a real boon for um, a, a lab because it means that the, uh, the a single person who would normally be almost nurse mating machine for a thermal transition and thermal work is then freed up to do a lot of other things. So that's, that's really very good. Um, let me just uh, minimize the screen for a moment. Um, so right now you can see it's making a series of measurements. Um, this uh, thing we're flashing here is, uh, this is our wind car calibration software. And let me just um, stop this uh, for a moment. Stop our script, so it's, oh, it's testing complete, so it's actually finished its run. Um, and let me just show you a few things. So uh, if I, for instance, right now decide, oh, I want to I want to get a calibration on my machine, but I don't want to have to adjust the geometry. Look, the geometry is spaced out here. I don't want to adjust that. So what I can do is just press this button and the system's now going to go uh, and run through a calibration sequence. Just try and get this out of the way. So the first part of the calibration sequence is we want to clean the probes. Uh, we want to clean the probes to make sure we haven't built up any contaminant or have anything which otherwise affect the calibration we're trying to do. Now this happens over temperature, so we've got to be able to know that we can accurately find that cleaning media without any damage to our probes. We do this by looking for uh, a viducial, effectively this time we're using a corner of the auxiliary chuck fence, and it knows the offset from that point uh, to the cleaning media. So we come and it's going to go to hit the cleaning media very quickly. And in this case we make nine cleaning cycles. Now we're going to go to the uh, impedance standard substrate. 
and now we're going to find um, a, a video shoot on here. So we're looking for this um, S shape that you can see, and the system's able to know where that is, and then it's going to find the probes. You can see I'm highlighting the probe tips. And if necessary, it's going to make a series of adjustments in X, Y, and Z, so each probe is within the tolerances that we expect. So you might see a few little bit of iterations. It's looking for a final distance of 130, an initial of 150. Um, uh, sorry, no, 170, because there'll be 20 micron scrub per, plow, per probe. You also see we've got augmented align, so these marks would be useful if I was a, a user doing some manual work, uh, but I don't need to worry about that. The system is purely doing that um, all on its own. So with that done, the system's going to uh, run its auto calibration. If it were doing anything over temperature, it would be in fact doing a stabilize as well at this point. So it'd be stabilizing the probes, getting them back up to operating temperature uh, at the wafer. And then with the uh, calibration done, we then stabilize, we would stabilize again, assuming the calibration is successful. So hopefully it will be. If it isn't, it won't let me out. It will go and do it again. We're just on the load right now. All real. <laughs> uh, and so uh, now we're going to go, and if it, again, if we're at temperature, temperature will be stabilizing again, warming the probes back up. And then once this is complete, we'll run uh, a validation and a monitor. So basically, we're going to go grab the monitoring data uh, from it. And uh, the monitoring data will use us to make sure that we know that the calibration is still good at a later time. Why do we do this? Well, the systems do uh, basically drift as a function of time, and we want to know that any measurement that we make is a valid measurement. So uh, what you're looking at here uh, is a Python script, and the intention of this Python script is we're going to do uh, a transition up to uh, a temperature of 55 degrees C. So we've done the transition already, and the system is soaking. And once we're at the operating temperature, uh, the system should initiate a calibration sequence, um, which we, might, we may speed, speed through uh, in this video. Uh, and then we'll actually run through and show it uh, moving from structure to structure uh, and doing its uh, monitors, or we may do its monitors. It's, it's optional for the system, depending on how many die steps uh, it's done. Uh, let me just uh, get this out the frame. So you can see uh, the system gives you full status of how it's doing. You can see the soaking time. It tells you how much it's uh, got to soak. In this case, we have a somewhat artificial time uh, of uh, only a like, couple of minutes. Uh, but once it's uh, finished its soaking, uh, it will then uh, go and do its uh, various alignments, recalibration, uh, and then we'll go to measure the structures uh, on the wafer. And incidentally, it can uh, do this even with a very simple Python script. Uh, it can basically take those measurements directly from WinCal. Uh, but more often than not, this would be done by a customer test executive, um, such as uh, Wafer Pro or Wafer Pro Express from Keysight. So now it's just entering the um, the calibration sequence which we saw earlier. So we'll probably we'll probably cut through this in our video. And at the end of the uh, calibration, uh, we'll move back to the wafer uh, with the intention of moving, uh, stabilizing the probes, getting them warm and back up to temperature. And then we perform a validation work that checks uh, basically the cal calibration against a uh, uh, model. And it will then also do uh, a monitor measurement. And the monitor measurement grabs uh, a trace uh, and uses that to do a comparison against at any given time to make sure your calibration hasn't drifted. That's really important for our customers because they want to make sure that any measurement they do um, ha is basically within the specifications expected. Now, that uh, monitor activity um, is done purely uh, at a customer's behest, so it can select the number of cycles, number of you know, die moves, subsite moves, and all those kinds of things are settable at all time. System now is doing an alignment of that wafer. It's a view track align, make sure it's all correctly aligned, which is useful at temperature. Not essential, because the system does do adjustment from each die step.
And with that done, uh, it will basically uh, be viewing its uh, transition as being complete. Uh, and then it effectively hands over the probe back to the Tesla executive. All the activities that you just saw happening a moment ago uh, were purely autonomous. The Tesla executive did none of those things. Uh, it was purely um, uh, the system getting the system, getting itself in a state, corrected and ready for work, ready for measurements. But after it hands it back and it's done its, uh, its die soak, make sure it's stabilized and then it will start going to its test sites. So the scans that you can see are this is the system looking for the probe tip, finding uh, the, fo the in focus uh, to know what height it's gone to, and then finding in pattern recognition X Y offsets. If it's different from the expected or trained dimension, it will make adjustments in X and Y uh, using the motorized positioners. So it should now step to its first actual official test die. It's got a little little uh, delay in my script. So we now get to our, our first official test site. And you can see we made contact. Now you can see it's going to be taking a measurement of that location in a Winkow report. And now it should move to a different geometry device. And it's purely using uh, the Velux wafer map for this. So there's nothing special. My script doesn't have to know these positions. It's purely contained in the Velux wafer map. So if you want to test them yourself, you literally just move there, just click that location, and you'll get the same effect. And then it will progress for the whole wafer. It will do a die step. If required, it will do a monitor to check that the, the, uh, its data is going to be valid. If it, the monitor's failed, it recalibrate. If it hasn't failed and it's valid, it just goes and continues to measurement. And that enables you to do simple, accurate measurements, unattended and remote.